before we start, let's just go into a word of prayer and then we can, uh, we can begin. So uh, pray with me. Uh, God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Father, as we enter into your word today, we ask that we have an encounter with you. We pray that you'll speak to our hearts, but you also speak to our minds, God. That, Father, as we leave this place, we will leave, we will leave challenged, but also encouraged um, by your word today. God, out of my brokenness, I'm just fully relying on you today. So please speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So some time ago, uh, we, as in me and my family, we, we, we didn't have kids at the time, um, but it was my other big family with my brother, sister, and then some family friends. Uh, we were in Victoria, and we decided to rent mopeds. Um, I, more like peer pressured into doing these mopeds. I didn't want to do it because I, I was scared. I, I can't ride. I thought they were like motorcycles, kind of. That's not me. I'm Filipino. But um, <laughs> we rented mopeds to, to go around the city, to just drive around and explore. So there's five of us. There, there's my wife, Shala, my brother, my sister, and our friend, Hazel. So, you know, we're, we're going on the mopeds, and man, they were pretty cool. And, you know, I'm like, I was riding at the back, so my, my brother and sister, they're up in front, and Shaw was up front. So I was at the back, and I was just enjoying the view. And I was just like, wow, this is a beautiful city. Has anyone been to Victoria? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm riding, and I'm just, you know, taking my time, not in a hurry. And I realize, when I look back, there's a huge line of cars behind me. I, I guess I was driving really slow. So, you know, as a nice, courteous Christian, I pulled over and I waved everyone to go past me. So I waved, man, there's probably like 12 cars. I don't know, there's lots. So I'm like waving the by, and you know, you can see their faces, they look frustrated and stuff, but you know, I'm smiling and stuff. So I wave and I'm like, just, yeah, just, just pass me. So I finally, the last car passed. I get back on my moped, and I notice my family has left me. They didn't even wait. So I'm like, where are these guys? So I'm like driving up, and I drive up the hill, and they're gone. They didn't even wait for me. So I'm like, okay, maybe they turned right. So I turn right, and I'm looking for them, and I turn left. And I'm looking around, and there's no one there. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, I just got married at the time. My wife was already left me. And I'm like, my goodness, what are we? So I'm driving to Victoria all by myself. It's starting to get dark. And I'm lost. I realize that I'm lost. And feeling lost is the worst feeling. It's, you feel absolutely like you don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. I don't even know how I got back. I'm not sure how, but I got back somehow. Maybe it took me a few hours, because when I got back, my family was there. But feeling lost is a terrible feeling. It's not one that people like to feel. Yet, that's how many Christians feel spiritually. They, they feel lost. You know, they look at their relationship with God, and it's become stagnant. There's no life in it. There's no energy. There's no passion. They don't feel like they're growing. It feels like they're just drifting with no direction. So that's my big question today is, how can a Christian stay on track? Like how can a Christian... Stay on track. And that's what our Bible passage is about today. If you want to open your Bibles to 2 Peter verse 1, uh, chapter 1, sorry, verse 3 to 8, 3 to 8. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 8. If you don't have your Bibles, it will be up on the screen. So please read with me. Verse 3, 
It says this, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate, participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Verse 5. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to, pers- and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our passage today tells us that if we want to stay on track spiritually, if we want to stay on track spiritually, we need to make every effort to build character. Character. Make every effort to build character because that's what matters most, that God cares about who you are becoming, not necessarily what you've achieved, not necessarily your dreams or goals, but who you are becoming, your character. That we should build character when we are alone and and we should build character with others. So that's my first point today is build character when we are alone. You know, one of my favorite artists, musical artist, is Stevie Wonder. I love Stevie Wonder. Does anyone love him too? Or is it just me? Oh, okay, just a, just a few hands. That's okay, you know. But one of my favorite songs is Isn't She Lovely. Oh, just this beautiful song. And I find him so intriguing. I find him so intriguing. Why? Because he's blind. He's blind. And I'm like, what? He can't see Yet, he knows how to play the harmonica. Yet, he knows how to play the drums. Yet, he knows how to play the piano. And to me, how is that even possible? In an NPR article, he told the publication that ever since he was a kid, he's been fascinated by sound. So fascinated by sound that he taught himself how to play the drums at age three. Uh, That's crazy. I've tried to play the drums. I have eyes. I suck. I can't do it. I'm not very good. But at age three, he taught himself how to play the harmonica at age six. And by, by the time he was 10, he was playing the piano. By 21, Stevie Wonder was writing his own music. He's blind. Like, that's crazy to me. But even with all his success, you know, number one songs, you would think, you would think, you know, he's made money, he's done all this stuff, he's accomplished so many things, you would think it'd be okay for him to just relax. Oh, I've made it, I've done it. But he kept working on his craft. The article stated that he was adamant on completing his formal training as a professional pianist. He continued to pursue his piano and singing lessons. He even went on to take lessons on songwriting to further refine his art. It's an amazing attitude. And I still can't get over the fact that he's blind. That's, it's insane. Because he could have, he could have let his disability discourage him. He could have said, well, I'm blind, so I don't even need to try. Why try the piano? Instead, he kept growing, growing as a musician. And it's the same way with us. We need to work on our character. Some of us were like, oh, we become Christians, then we just stop. We don't want to do anything anymore. We don't even try. 
But our Bible passage explains that God has given us everything that we need to live the greatest life with him. But it takes commitment on our part. So he tells us to keep trying. Let's read verse 5 to 6 again. For this very reason, make every effort. Make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness. Peter tells us to make every effort. Work, try. Make every effort to add to your faith. Sometimes there is this misunderstanding. It's a big one. It's a common misunderstanding when it comes to the word effort. Some Christians make effort sound like it's a bad thing. You're like, oh, maybe we just shouldn't try. We might be earning our salvation. But that's not what it means here. Yes, it's true. We are saved by grace. That's it, period. We are saved by grace, not works. We are saved by grace. We are saved by Jesus' work on the cross. But effort is not opposed to faith. It's not opposed to faith. We are not earning our salvation here. God has done it already. What we're doing instead is we are building on top of salvation. We're building on top of that foundation that Jesus has made for us. So make every effort. Jesus has made a way for us to have this relationship with God. But like in any relationship, whether it's with a spouse or a friend or even your kids, there has to be effort. You have to try. If you put no effort, you know, you don't put any energy into a relationship, of course it will get stagnant. You know, look at my flowers, like my flowers. If I just did nothing with them, what will happen to it? If I didn't pour water or put it in the sun, it will die. There has to be effort. God has told us how to have a good relationship with him. He gives us a list here of virtues to keep working on. First, he talks about goodness. Goodness here means moral excellence. We are building our character into becoming more like Jesus. Then we add knowledge, any kind of learning that is relevant to the faith, like the Bible. Then we work on self-control, the ability to say no to temptation, the ability to do what is wise and not overindulge. We add perseverance, the ability to keep going when things go rough, when things don't go the way we want it to, when we are in the valleys to keep going because life will get hard. We need perseverance to keep going. Then Peter mentions godliness. In that culture, the word meant to have the right attitude toward God. This attitude of respect, this attitude of reverence changes how we live. This is the character that we should be aiming for. This is not about perfection. No, no one's perfect here. No one does this perfectly, but it makes a world of difference when we try. When we're trying, we're putting effort into a relationship with God. You know, one, one way I do this um, for myself is uh, I do a lot of daily self-reflection at night. Um, I ask myself questions. You know, like, how was my self-control today? And there are days where it's like, oh, it's been bad, especially with my kids. Those kids, you know, those darn kids. And you're like, oh, you blow up on them. And I'm like, oh, man, oh, how, how is my self-control with my wife? You know, when she says, can you wash the dishes? And I'm like, no, I'm watching again. I'm like, oh, man, this self-reflection, you know, you're, you're, you're 
this daily, just really checking on your character. And when you mess up and you're not doing it good, you're not doing self-control well, then there's this confession that I do with God. I'm like, oh God, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have done that. And then I go to my kids and, and my wife, especially my wife, and I apologize. And then I make every effort not to do it again. And oh, it's been tough, okay? I, I fail so much, so many times. But there has to be this daily, you know, self-evaluation, this check. So let's take the time and energy to work on our character. Instead of, you know, instead of just looking at our phones all the time or, you know, watching too much TV, let's, let's take this time. Maybe sit in silence with God and just reflect. Put that energy and time to work on our character, pursue things that will last. Now, not all character traits I listed here can be worked on when we are alone, when we're by ourselves. Peter ends off this list with character traits that we can't practice alone. And this leads to my next point. You build character with others. Build character with others. Anne Rice is one of my favorite authors. The popular movie Interview with the Vampire with Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt is based on her book. So she was an atheist, but news came out that she had become a Christian. I went, whoa, and I was stoked. I went, right on, Annie. And I was like super excited and happy. But after 10 years of being a Christian, she announced online that she was quitting the church. She wrote the following words. This is what she writes. Today, I quit being a Christian. I'm out. I don't know if she said it that way, but I'm out. I remain committed to Christ as always, but not to being a Christian or being part of Christianity. It's simply impossible for me to belong. Belong to this quarrelsome, hostile, disputatious, what a word, disputatious and deservedly infamous group. My faith in Christ is central to my life, but following Christ does not mean following his followers. Very interesting. On one hand, I could totally understand where she's coming from. I get it. There are some Christians, and you probably, maybe someone's coming to your mind, there are some Christians in my life. I'm not going to name their names. And I'm like, ugh, man. Imagining spending eternity with them doesn't sound very exciting. It's like, hmm, there's some Christians who are like, oh. Just, you know, you just do that emoji eye roll at there. It's like, oh, God. They're here again, you know? And it's tough. But then on the other hand, on the other hand, it's, I believe it's impossible to fully follow Jesus without other people. It's impossible to gain the last remaining character traits in our passage without other people. You can't do it with other people, without other people. Let's read the last part of verse 7 again. Remember I said, make, it, make every effort to add to your faith. Make every effort. Then verse 7 says, add mutual affection. Mutual affection, love. Can you... Practice mutual affection and love without other people. Can you? It doesn't work. You can't do Christianity, you can't do the Christian life all by yourself. The Christian life needs other people, or else, I'd argue, it's impossible. 
You know, Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, he says, carry, carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. They carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. How do you follow this if you have isolated yourself from everyone else? It is incredibly difficult to carry someone's burden if you are not a part of a community of believers. For sure, community has its challenges. I've already said, there's some people who are just like, oh gosh, not them again. It's hard to love difficult people. I get it. Yet that is what God is calling us to do. We are called to love. In the original Greek that Peter wrote in, he uses two words for love. The first word is Philadelphia. Okay? The first Greek word he uses is Philadelphia, which means love of brothers. That's why the city of Philadelphia is called the city of brotherly love. If you didn't know why. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Just kidding. It's in the Greek. City of brotherly love. That we treat each other like brothers and sisters. I don't know if you have brothers and sisters. Oh, we fight all the time. Oh, my sister, she texted me. Oh, long messages of anger. It's tough, but we still love each other. The second Greek word he uses is agape, love that comes from God. This special kind of love that only happens among Christians. We see this in 1 John 4 to 7. It reads, Dear friends, let us love agape. I added that, okay. One another. For love, agape, comes from God. Everyone who loves agape has been born of God and knows God. This means that there's this kind of love that is exclusively Christian, a love that comes from God. Then when God puts love in our heart and we love the other person, because God loves them. That's agape. So what I'm trying to point out is we need other people in order to love and be loved. We can't do church alone. I get it. It'd be easier, for sure. But we need to form genuine, two-way friendships where we love each other. Every Christian is called to belong to the church where we love People who are easy to love with mutual affection. There's this mutuality. And we love people who are hard to love with the love that comes from God. Agape. So let's pray for great friendships in the community of believers. Let's stop thinking that church is just a worship service to attend and then we just get up and leave. There's more to it. Let's put in the effort in developing friendships with people in the church. You're obviously not expected to be friends with everyone. It's impossible. But if we can make even one or two great friendships where we can practice these virtues of mutual love, of mutual affection, that makes a great difference. And when you come across people who are hard to love, you will. Probably at this picnic. We ask God to put this love in our hearts. Like, here's a burger, man, or something like that. Just kidding. I don't want to see people giving burgers and I find out that's who you hate. Okay? Just joking. Okay. Just, just love each other. So as we conclude, our big question today was, how can, we, how can a Christian stay on track? Our passage tells us we stay on track by putting in effort to build our character. To build our character. And I know that sometimes it's not the answer that people want. It's to build character. Because our character is what God cares a lot about. He cares about who we are becoming. And we can do this by working on our character alone, putting in the time, energy, into becoming more godly in every area of our lives, growing in self-control, knowledge, goodness, perseverance. And if you're not doing this well right now, today is a new day. Let's try. Get back up. No self-pity parties. Let's get back right up and try again. Make every effort. 
But then there are character traits that only grow when we practice them with other people. And if we keep growing like that, we will stay on track. Character. God is inviting us to something great. He has a great plan for us, great promises that we can participate in. We saw that in verse 3 to 4, right? Verse 3, it says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. Through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness, through these he has given us very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the, in the divine nature, that God used his divine nature to give us everything, the forgiveness of our sins, victory over death. He did this by dying on a cross. 